And at last, with this magic marketing formula, I shall be the one to get all the customers in the world. <laughs> What's going on guys? Hope you enjoyed that silly little intro. Now I have a very special video today because we're talking about marketing research. And of course, marketing research is important because that's something that you wanna have nailed down before you even think about marketing. And to support this, in 2006, Microsoft released a product called Zoom that was supposed to compete with Apple's iPod. But they discontinued the product in 2011 because it failed to differentiate themselves from the iPod. And according to a former Microsoft executive, it just didn't give people enough reason to choose their product over the iPod. So clearly it's important your marketing research is on point. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the steps that we take to do some market research. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Sean with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that saves small businesses from bad marketing and no growth. Now listen to this, around half of businesses with employees don't survive past their fifth year according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In order to stay afloat, most businesses need a steady and consistent flow of customers. And you can start off on the right foot by doing some sound marketing research. Hey Sean, according to my calculations, there should be a potential customer at 169 degrees longitude and 83 degrees latitude that is wearing a pink and green shirt. Let's go get them. Okay, not that kind of research. What I mean is that you want to look at maybe three to four high level items it will provide you with greater visibility into your market. So by the end of this video, you should understand some key things that you can do right now with the internet at a very small cost that will heighten your level of success while performing marketing research. And I'll be jumping on my computer to show you exactly what to do step by step. But before I dive in, if you love marketing, you love growth, and you love business, and you want to learn from real practitioners, then click the like button on this video so YouTube will show our videos to other people like you and make sure that you subscribe to our channel. All right, now that that's out the way, let's go ahead and dive in with step number one. Analyze your product and your audience. Now, chances are you already have an idea or a product that you believe millions of people will love. You get a product, you get a product, everybody gets a product. So we won't spend a whole lot of time on this part, but some of you guys need to hear this, okay? Having a good idea and having a good product is not enough. You need to ask yourself, why would someone use what you're offering? And don't give yourself a fluffy answer like, because it's cool, man. Everyone's gonna love it once they finally try it. So listen, your product or your service needs to solve a legitimate problem. And make sure you stick to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you guys some messages that you can put together with those problems. And once you figure out what the problem is, you're gonna realize that, okay, not everyone has this same problem. So that's gonna help you to start fine tuning your audience, okay? So for example, a dry cleaners may initially think like, hey, I have the best service, I have the best machines, everyone's clothes are gonna come out really nice and everyone's gonna love it. But once you identify the problem, then you may discover that the real problem is actually professionals in the area don't have time to clean and iron their clothes, which will give you a much clearer audience. All right, once you get that together, then you're ready to move on to step number two, which is to determine your market size. Here's the deal. Every company has a ceiling or what some people like to call a market cap. So going back to our dry cleaners example, their market size may be limited to the professionals who are working within a 15 mile radius of their shop. So in this case, the population size will largely determine the size of their market. And if they have competitors who are also within a 15 mile radius, then that will limit their reach as well. Okay, so how exactly do you determine the market size? Now this can get pretty deep, but what we like to do is look at data from the two biggest online companies in the world, which are Google and Facebook. So I'm gonna hop on my computer and show you exactly what we do when we're trying to analyze the online market size. 
All right, guys, I'm on my computer now, and we're gonna take a look at how to determine the market size step by step. So one of the first things that I like to do is pull up a Google Sheet or an Excel Sheet so I can take some notes. If you prefer Google Docs or a Word Doc, you can do that as well, or even use a good old fashioned notepad and pen. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the product and the audience, right? So that's what we covered in the first part of this video. And um, I have a sample a product and audience just so we can determine the market size together step by step. So the brand name is something generic. We're calling it Soothing Bath Salts. The description of the product is a honey bath salt for relaxation and soft skin. All right, now what is the problem? Remember guys, every product needs to solve a problem. So the problem here is that it helps people with skin redness and eczema who wants products without preservatives, okay? So this is gonna be a product that is organic and all natural. All right, now who's the audience? The audience is obviously gonna be anybody with eczema or skin issues. All right, and then in the last column here, refined audience, that is something that you can do later on down the line once you have enough purchases that you can start to refine the audience even more. So let's say you have a thousand purchases and you notice that most people buying are females between the ages of 30 and 40, and you can start using that data to refine your audience. All right, so let's go ahead and turn to Facebook to see exactly how we can determine the market size. So I am going to Facebook Ads Manager, and what we wanna go to is the ad set so that we can start looking at the specific type of people that we can target and how big that audience is. So we'll click on ad set here. And then we'll just scroll down to the detailed targeting in the audience section. We'll leave it on the United States and we may change the age. Let's go ahead and change the age to 18 to maybe people who are 50. All right. And then in the detail targeting, this is where the magic's gonna happen. So um, our product, let's go back to our sheet in our notes. First and foremost, our product is a bath salt. So let's see how many people on Facebook are interested in bath salts. All right, so boom, we found a category and it looks like 170,000 people on Facebook are interested in bath salts. All right, um, let's do another salt. Let's do Epsom salt. All right, and Ep Epsom salt is not coming up here. So uh, we're just gonna stick with bath salt. So I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet. I'm gonna go to a new tab and I'm gonna type in um, Facebook audience description. We searched for bath salts and the Facebook audience size was 220,000 people. It looks like 170,000 people on Facebook are interested in bath salt. Audience size was 220,000 people. All right, so now what else do, does our product do? Our product helps people with skin redness. And let's say skin redness. Not getting anything with skin redness. Let's say skin care. Okay, we got a lot of skin care options. So. Uh, we don't want people who are studying skincare. They likely already have a service or a product or an employer that provides skincare. We obviously don't want to target employers because they have products and businesses around skincare. We just want to target the masses who are interested in skincare in general and probably improving the skin, their skincare. All right, and so we saw a bunch of options. Let's see what else we can tag along here. Okay, remember our product is a natural skincare product. So this is gonna work really good. Let's type in organic skincare and see if we can find something. So we have some competitors here when we type in organic skincare, which we can throw in here as well. All right, let's see where our potential reach is. So wow, look at that guys. We have 32 million people on Facebook who are interested in something around skincare. So we're gonna go back to our marketed research list, go to market size and we typed in uh, skincare, that's the, category and we're gonna say this is 32 million people all right so that is really really good it's really really good all right and then of course our product solves a problem which is eczema all right let's see how many people on Facebook may be experienced in this problem as well so we have the National Eczema Association 
I'm imagining that a lot of people who have eczema are following something like this. Um, and so let's type in other eczema interests and that's all we got. So eczema, we got about 260,000 people who are interested in eczema on Facebook. So boom, we just notated that and we're gonna sum all this up at the end. Now let's turn to Google to look at what people are searching for around this topic. And to do that, I'm going to Google Ads Manager. We'll go to Tools here, and then we'll go to Keyword Planner. And then we're just gonna start running some searches. So again, our product is a bath salt. Now Google is very uh, high intent and is, uh, it is a large platform. And if you haven't seen Karan's video on Facebook ads versus Google ads, then make sure you like you watch that video. I'm gonna link it up above. So uh, we're gonna search for bath salt. We want something high intent. So we're gonna say bath salt for eczema. All right, bath salt for eczema. That's gonna be the search. And look at this, we got bath salt for eczema. 260 times per month being searched, Epsom salt for eczema, 880 times being searched, and then we have some longer tail keywords here that are uh, not very significant, maybe five, 50 to, to 10 searches. So overall, it looks like this is about a thousand searches per month. So I'm gonna go back to my market research and we search for bath salt for eczema and we had about a thousand searches per month. Now, since that was per month, I'm gonna multiply that times 12 to think about how big the audience size is over the course of a year. All right, so for that particular search term, we can reach about 12,000 people uh, in a year. All right, so now what else, what else? Let's go back to our product and audience. What else could we search? So um, um, let's think about eczema, eczema honey, eczema honey as a search keywords so let's say eggs the honey all right that is uh within our product and look at that guys uh eggs and honey gets searched 14,800 times which is huge and so we're just going to type in eggs and honey as the search keyword and that was 14,800 searches we're going to multiply that by 12 and we have about 177,000 people that we can reach through that search all right, which is very, very good. All right, let's go ahead and throw one more search work, search term here. Um, thinking about our product again, our, our product is helping people with redness. So we're, we'll type in skin care for redness as a search result. And yeah, here we're getting about a thousand searches per month when searching for skin care of redness. So we're just gonna go back to our sheet Skin care for redness, and we're gonna give it 1,000 searches times 12, and we'll get 12,000 people in our audience size per year once again. All right, and we'll just go ahead and sum these particular searches up. Uh, sum this up really quick, and then we'll sum it up here. And then boom, we have an estimated audience size of about 33 million people, maybe two, maybe uh, a little bit less than that, but that's how we can start looking at the market size. Of course, you can get much deeper than that, continue to play with other keywords in both Facebook and Google so that you can put together a very accurate market size. But if you're just starting out, then this is probably enough to get you going. All right, I'm gonna hop back in front of the camera to discuss the next steps. So as you can see, if you spend some time playing with these two online data giants, then you'll quickly start to get an idea of the market size. And of course, you can use data from other online platforms like Bing, Twitter, LinkedIn, and more to help you define your size even further. Hey Sean, shouldn't we aim for the biggest market size possible? Not necessarily. So even if you have a big market, it comes down to how many competitors are in that market. Or as some others would ask, how saturated is the market? Which brings us to our next point, step number three, competitor research. Now I've heard over and over again, statements like, man, we're doing something that no one has ever seen before. 
so we don't have any competitors. Or our offer is so unique that no one, and I mean no one, can really compete with us. But here's the reality. Even if your product is unique, remember it has to solve a problem. So you're actually competing with any company that is currently solving the same problem as you. Even a company as unique as Uber, when it launched, still had to compete with taxis and they still kind of are to a certain extent. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate step by step how to go about doing some competitor research. And we're gonna hop back on my computer and turn to social media and search engines once again. All right guys, I'm back on my computer now and this time we're gonna be doing some competitive research, all right? So you wanna make sure you're paying attention because this is really important for your marketing research. All right, so remember earlier we calculated our market size. This time we wanna see exactly how many competitors are within that market size. All right, so we'll go back to our market size tab here. And we did some keyword research for bath salt for eczema, and we found that 12,000 people search that every year. So I'm just gonna copy that keyword phrase, and we're actually gonna go to google.com and search it to find out how many competitors are already taking advantage of this search. So the first one I see here is eczema honey co. So I'm just gonna click on this website and we're gonna copy, copy their domain here and we're gonna add them to our competitor tab, right? Honey Co. All right, and then I'm gonna use one of my favorite tools, SEMrush, to do some competitive research. You can also use a website like SimilarWeb to do some similar things. All right, so one of the things I wanna go to is a competitor research toolkit and then go to our traffic analytics and traffic analytics are gonna start showing me how this company is generating their success right now online. All right, so um, off the bat, they're getting 113,000 hits to their website every month. So it's safe to say that this company is already doing a really great job. So let's see where this traffic is coming from. So this blue line here is the direct traffic, which means a lot of people already know about this website because they're going straight to it. They're typing in eczemahoneyco.com straight from their phone, straight to their browsers. All right, so that is about 67% of their traffic. They're also doing some paid Google ads, which is bringing in about 20% of their traffic. They're doing some SEO that is bringing in about 9% of their traffic some social media that's bringing in just 2% of their traffic, and they have just about 0% referral traffic. All right, so we wanna look at this pay and search and try to combine these to figure out how much traffic they may be get, getting from a place like Google. So we have 22,000 plus 10,000. We're just gonna say that it is about 24,000. <laughs> So Google traffic in our spreadsheet, we're gonna note at 24,000. I'm just gonna make this a number because that's how I like to make it. And boom, all right. And then next we wanna look at the domain authority. Now, if you don't know what domain authority is, then make sure you watch the SEO video linked above. But essentially the domain authority is gonna tell us how powerful their website is. So I'm gonna go back to SEMrush to figure this out and I'll go to, let's see if I can get to domain overview here. And we should get our domain authority or what some SEOs call authority score. And we have a 38. So a 38 is their domain authority. We're just gonna note that here. Then we wanna look at exactly how much they're spending with those Google ads that we saw they had earlier, which again, SEMrush is gonna show us. So we're gonna click on paid search traffic and let's see how much they're paying for this traffic. Come on, it's loading up, taking its time here. All right, and traffic costs. They're spending about $5,600 every month for this traffic, all right? So we're just gonna note that as their campaign budget spend, oh, $5,600 every month, turn that into dollars, boom. 
All right, and then social media traffic. So we wanna see if this company is advertising on social media. In order to do that, we can go to Facebook's new ad library, which I just love. And so we can come here and type in eczema honey co. And let's see if that comes up. Yep, we got their company right here. And look at that, we can spy on their ads, guys. This is so cool. So right now, it looks like they just launched one ad campaign in May of 2018. And outside of that, they don't have any ads running right now. So um, with this particular ad, they spent about $600, but again, it's not active. And we can see the ad that they ran here. It looks like a little video um, showing how a kid used their product. So over here for social media traffic, um, we're, we really don't have to put much here. We can say NA, an estimated spend. They really aren't spending anything on social media, so we'll say NA again. All right, let's look at one more, one more competitor research or competitor for this space. So um, going back to Google, we search uh, bath salt for eczema. Let's pick a new search. Let's go back to our market size and let's search eczema honey and Google, all right? And let's see what companies come up now. So look at that, we got eczemahoney.co coming up again. They're clearly dominating this space. Um, they're here at the top of the search engines here. All right, let's go back to our market research and see skincare for redness. Let's find another product for skincare for redness. All right, so we have the dermstore.com. All right, so we're gonna click on that. Again, copy the domain name, take it back to our market research tab, and we're going to look at um, pasting their name here, and then we're going to go and look at their uh, Google traffic. All right, so let's go back here, competitor research toolkit, let's do a traffic analysis, and let's type in their domain right here, the Durham store. And wow, this company is huge. They have 4.5 million visitors to their website every single month. So this is definitely a company that we can pay attention to. Um, and it looks like a lot of their traffic is coming from search, just organic search. And they're doing a little bit of paid advertising as well. So we have 1.4 million in SEO and 111,000 in paid Google ads. So we'll just call this about 1.5 million and Google traffic. All right, so that is huge. Let's turn this into a number. All right, yeah, so 1.5 million hits in Google traffic. Now that's pretty high, guys. I normally don't see stats like that, but that is definitely something to take a note of. Um, and as you see, again, they don't have a lot of social traffic. That's only bringing in about 1%. Paid traffic bringing in about 3%, referral at 4%. So. A lot of people just know who they are and they're going directly to their site or they're finding them on SEO. All right, so I'm imagining that this site has a huge domain authority, but let's take a look and note this down. All right, so their authority score is 64, 64. That is a pretty good domain authority for that space. Now let's look at how much money they might be spending in paid traffic and they are spending, looks like they're, okay, so this is a little off. They, uh, their traffic cost, cost about 1.4 million, but this isn't exactly what they're paying for because they have so much organic traffic. Um, so we're just gonna actually just ignore this for now and um, just leave this in A. Now let's see if they're doing any social media ads, the Derm Store, Derm Store is the name. So let's go back to the Facebook ad library, type in the Derm score, Store, and here they are. Let's see if they're running any ads right now. And yeah, guys, they're running some ads. It looks like um, they have a three or four running right now. These could be retargeting ads. Let's click on some of the ad details and see what information we get. So not a lot of information on the ad spin. Let's click on another ad. Yeah, so we're not getting a lot of information on the ad spin here. Oh, here we go. So they spent $739 here. Uh, let's see what time period that may have been. Not quite sure the time period, but $739 is what they're spending in Facebook ads. And um, 
Yeah, guys, so uh, $739 is not gonna get you a lot on Facebook, so I'm just gonna estimate maybe they're at a dollar, maybe $2 per click. So we'll just say this times 1.5, and we'll estimate their social media traffic at about 1,000 hits per month, which again is very, very low according to those advertising statistics that we just looked at. All right, guys, so uh, I won't bore you too much by continuing to go on with this process, but as you can see, this is how you can start to look at your competitors, analyze exactly what they're doing, take some notes from their messages and their, uh, their, their different strategies so you can leverage that in your own advertising as well. I'm gonna hop back in front of the camera now to wrap this video up. Now chances are you're gonna run into some pretty big competitors, but don't get discouraged, okay? This is actually a great thing because you can start studying their moves and use them for yourself as well. And also remember, patience is key. Rome wasn't built in a day or even a year. All right, let's move on to the last step, step number four, differentiation. So after going through all the steps above, you should have a greater sense of the problems that you solve, the market size, and your competitors. Now you can take all this information and start creating stronger messages. And here is where you can start winning the hearts of your potential customers. Because you can speak towards their needs because you understand their problem and who they are. And you also understand the market. So you can call out specifics like geographics and demographics, okay? And perhaps most importantly, you understand the competitors. So you can speak towards what you offer that your competitors cannot. In fact, a compelling marketing tactic that some brands take advantage of are comparison charts. Here's an example of a comparison chart on the screen. So when a customer is doing their research and trying to find out what is the best product for them, you just made it super easy. And this can help you elevate your level of trust with your potential customer and give them abilities to quickly analyze your value proposition without reading tons of words or watching minutes of videos. All right guys, so those are the four powerful tips that I have for anyone who's looking to do some quick marketing research. These are the steps that I take when I'm analyzing our businesses and our clients, and I'm certain that they're gonna help you as well. And wow, look at that, you made it to the end of this video. And congrats on making yourself a better marketer today. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can continue to provide more value. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean, and I'll see you in the next video.